guys, welcome back to my channel. So I am currently sitting on my table and I'm drinking a little bit of cold brew, kind of taking a break. About two weeks ago, I put out a video that was a monthly food prep. And um, you guys seem to really like that. I know I enjoy that kind of inspiration because sometimes it's just nice to make up a month's worth of something and put it in the freezer and know that you can just grab it out and warm it up. Especially whenever they're really healthy options and you know that it's going to be a healthy meal for your family. So pretty much what I think I've decided to do is actually do this about twice a month, so roughly every two weeks and um you know try to make something last you know if i'm making meatballs to put them in the freezer try to make it that it's enough for a month but obviously there's times that we would use something up before the month's over so i may end up making some things you know those every two weeks making them every time just depends on how fast we use up whatever i made the last time i just feel like having a designated day for meal prepping even if it's every other week just having one specific day where you're cooking all day you're making the mess at one time you're able to clean your kitchen up all at once just cuts down on a lot of work overall. I actually started this video yesterday and never did an intro. I just started out by making my yogurt and so many of you had asked for like more specific details on how I make my yogurt. It's so easy. Like I bet it's like about five steps that you really need to make the yogurt and it's very very simple so i'm going to be showing you that in this video and then um i did some other things and i did some things this morning and now i'm about to go do some more things but i wanted to stop and actually make an intro for this so you guys aren't just starting in the middle of video if you're new here my name is adeline and my husband and i have three little girls and we live in north carolina and I do a lot of homemaking content and I'm a very do-it-yourself kind of person so I do a lot of home decor and motherhood tips and things like that um, just to hopefully inspire and motivate you. So I'm almost finished with my cold brew and I may need to make another one because I still have a lot to get done yet today but I'm gonna go ahead and get this video started. The last time I made yogurt in my pressure cooker so many of you asked for like a more detailed, are you gonna help me? Okay, a more detailed uh, like description or instructions on how to do this. It's so easy and I'm also going to tell you kind of your alternate way to do it if you don't have a pressure cooker. So basically the first thing you need to do is heat the milk up to 180 degrees. So you will need um, something like this to tell you how hot it is no matter if it's in your pressure cooker or on the stove top. So if you were doing it on the stove top in a big pot, you would just dump your milk in, get it going, um, and I'm gonna put the saute setting on my pressure cooker um, and get it up to 180 degrees. Careful, don't dump it. Dump it all the way in. Good job. Okay, now get the, the other one. Open the lid. While our milk is heating up, what are we gonna do? Do you wanna tell them? Cupcakes. Yeah, so today, what did we do this morning? You wanna tell them what we did this morning? We I've... went strawberry picking. Yeah, lots of local North Carolina strawberries here. So we wanna do some um, kind of shortbread type cupcakes to eat strawberries and shortcake. So if you guys are new around here, I'm very sugar conscious. Um, we don't eat a lot of sugar in our house, so I find lots of alternatives. And this is one of our favorite cake mixes. It comes out so well. They have a chocolate one as well. And um, I'll link it below. You can get it off of Amazon. So Everly's gonna help me, and we're gonna put these into silicone cupcakes. So we just have little rounds that we can um, put eat strawberries on top of and eat it with milk right mm -hmm. okay you help me out and we'll get it going so Everly and I just made a quick decision and what are we gonna add to the cake mix lemon lemon oil we're gonna make it a lemon cake which I think will be really good with strawberries
Okay, it's almost at 180 and I'm filling up a sink of ice water. I just pull it out of here and you wanna drop it down to 110 degrees. Whenever you are at this point and it's slowly dropping down to 110 degrees, you'll see that there's kind of what they call a skin that gets created on top and you can just remove it. After it drops to 110 degrees, you wanna immediately pull it out of the ice water because you don't want it to drop any further than that and then you can put it back in your pressure cooker. I will tell you in a second how to do it if you're just doing it in a pot and not in a pressure cooker. Um, so I did that and then I actually hit my yogurt setting here and just hit on and then it pretty much does the rest. But one very important step that you need to do when you're making yogurt is you actually need yogurt from your last batch or you can buy yogurt if it's your first time around. You just wanna buy plain yogurt. So you need about a fourth cup of it and then I take and ladle out a little bit of the milk to kind of bring that yogurt to temperature. So we'll just put a little bit in a bowl here. Then you'll want to put the yogurt into the warm milk. And I just kind of stir it into the milk before I dump it back in. So basically, the, that yogurt has the cultures in it to culture the milk that you just cooked up. So it's like your little starter. So every time you make a batch, you wanna put aside about you know a fourth cup of yogurt just so that you have it for your next batch. You'll dump it back in here. It doesn't really matter if your pressure cooker is uh, vented or unvented. It doesn't matter if your vent is open or closed. I just put mine closed. And then you just let it sit the eight hours on the yogurt setting. And when the eight hours is up, you will have an entire pressure cooker full of yogurt. Now, I'm going to tell you what to do if you don't have a pressure cooker. So you would put your pot in ice water once it hits 180 degrees, just like we did with this. And then you'll pull it out as soon as it hits 110. And then you put the lid on your kettle and wrap it in a bath towel. I know it sounds a little bit funny, but wrap it in a bath towel and then you just stick it in your oven. And that does a really good job. I've made it that way before, but that does a really great job at keeping the temperature where it needs to be and then again let it sit for you know eight to ten hours and check it and you should have yogurt that is perfect so you would do the same thing with mixing in your yogurt starter if you were doing it in a kettle as well this kind of saves the whole mess of needing to wrap it up and keep it in um, a bath towel so it just keeps it the exact temperature it needs to be inside of here It's the next day and I just, once the eight hours were up, I actually didn't like, it wasn't quite as thick as I wanted it to be. So I left it go for another two hours in the pressure cooker. You can kind of test it as you go. But as you can see, it's got a pretty good consistency. My last batch was a little thicker than this but that's okay, it can just be different every time. So anyway, so I will take out a little portion of this for my next batch, and then um, here are the strawberries that were left from yesterday, so I'm actually gonna throw those in this bowl and use my immersion blender and blend them up. You could totally smash them up with a fork. Um, I just want them to be a little bit smoother, and then I'm going to mix the yogurt in, and then I'm gonna do my sweetener. I think that it's better to mix the sweetener into the whole yogurt batch, and then kind of taste as you go to see how much you wanna add to it. Alright, so what I'm going to be making now is a nut granola or more so a grain free granola. So for the girls, my biggest things I avoid is gluten and sugar. 
And then for myself, I obviously avoid gluten and sugar as well. And then um, I also avoid a lot of dairy. Um, my stomach just doesn't do well on it. And one of the exceptions is grass-fed butter. Um, that's something that I often seem to be okay with. And so what we're gonna do is actually melt some peanut butter. So this is a 100% peanut butter. You can find it at Walmart. And it's really, really good. You do have to stir it pretty well. So I'm gonna do a fourth cup of peanut butter and a fourth cup of grass-fed butter in the microwave and kind of melt this down. After about a minute in the microwave, I just stirred this all together. I put about two dropperfuls of this vanilla stevia into it as well, just to make it a little bit sweeter and thin. In here, I have about two cups of shredded coconut, two cups of slivered almonds, a half cup of almond flour, and then I would say roughly about a cup of roughly chopped pecans. I just took my knife and chopped them up really well. You wanna have around five cups of whatever you're gonna put in here. You could do any kinds of nuts and seeds. Um, and I am kind of winging this. I have some idea. I've made something like this before actually a few times but I'm trying a little bit different of an idea. So you guys will see if it's a failure or a success today. This is something that I'm trying to get in the habit of making more regularly just because there's a lot of ways to hide little hidden things in these for my girls like vitamin C and things like that today. Um, I'm just doing a pretty simple recipe. In fact, a lot of times whenever I make gummies for them, that's what we're making is gummies. Um, I actually make multiple flavors, but today I'm just making one flavor. Um, so I get beef gelatin. I actually get mine off of Amazon. I will be sure to link it below and the molds are from Amazon. Amazon. I'll, I'll just link everything um, if you're interested in doing something like this. So for every cup of hot water you have, you want three tablespoons of gelatin. Beef gelatin has a lot of great health benefits and so it makes me really feel good that that's what the girls are eating. So then today I'm also putting in some lemon essential oil and then I'm putting in a little bit of food coloring and I've gotten a lot of comments about me using food coloring and I know that not all of it is really great for you. I'm actually looking to find a healthier alternative but most foods in the store already have food coloring and then they have sugar and then they have additives and then they have chemicals and just all of that kind of stuff. So I feel good that they're eating a candy that doesn't have sugar in them and is a healthy gelatin option, all of those things. And yeah, I might be putting some food coloring in, but it's still better than a majority of the things that you would purchase at the store. So all of that being said, they're kids, they want fun food, and that's why I use food coloring now and then. So I have two cups of water here, so I'm gonna add six tablespoons of gelatin whisking as I go. I love this little whisk for this purpose. And then I'm going to add in some stevia and kind of taste it as I go. Also adding the lemon essential oil, I'll kind of taste as I go. Once I feel like it tastes about right, then I will put it into the molds and then I just throw mine in the freezer so they harden really fast. If this part starts to gel up on you, um, just pop it back in the microwave and you can um, kind of dissolve it again and then put ready for the next batch. The granola is done and it smells and looks 
so amazing. <laughs> the girls kept asking what smells so good. And it smells like peanut butter in our house. So delicious. I can't wait to try a bowl of it. You guys might remember in my last meal prep video, I did a ton of freezer waffles. And we actually still have some in the freezer. The chocolate chip ones were definitely the favorite of the girls. And so that's the one I'll probably be remaking the next time I need to make them. But today I'm going to make some mini muffins. And I'm going to be using a very similar method. So when I made the waffles, I actually used oatmeal. And then I blended it with like eggs and other ingredients in my blender and made the waffles that way. I actually got the idea for this recipe off of Pinterest, but then I did some of my own tweaking to it. So I'll just tell you what I'm doing as I go along and we'll see how they turn out. Before we start the muffins, the gummies are out and they are ready to be popped out. So sometimes I forget about them a little bit too long and they get a little frosty on top. It doesn't matter. I just pop them out even if the frosty stays on them like that and just throw them in here and it quickly melts away. And then you get gummies just like this. So I'm gonna reload this before I start in on the muffins so I can keep this going. Here is everything I'm gonna put in the blender. So it is two ripe bananas, a cup of yogurt, um, this is a sweetener called Swerve. You can get it at almost any grocery store, but it's one third cup of Swerve. You'll need two and a half cups of rolled oats, two eggs, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and then half a teaspoon of baking soda. And these are gonna get baked at 400 degrees for around like 18 to 20 minutes until they're completely baked through. She's a Here they are finished and these were a major score. The girls are, they each had one and now they're begging for a second one and they are so good. I have made quite a few um, like healthy style muffins trying to make them taste really good and to be quite honest, I've kind of struggled with making really good muffins um, that have healthy ingredients and this one is so good. This is by far the best recipe that I've ever made and I really think that the yogurt is what makes it taste so good. It makes it just a great texture, they're very dense um, and super delicious. So this will be an easy breakfast option for them in the morning and the next time I make these, I probably will make a double batch. The next thing I'm gonna prep is one of my favorite things things and honestly I've been out of these for so long and I think about going to the freezer to grab one <laughs> every couple days I'm like oh I need to make another batch of those so these are my cookie dough bites that are really healthy and they taste so good and I just keep them in the freezer and then whenever I want something sweet I um, just go ahead and grab some usually after dinner I'll have like one or two and it just kicks that craving, but they're pretty healthy. All right, so you'll need a block of cream cheese. If you're somebody that's sensitive to dairy, you may wanna try out this cream cheese. A lot of grocery stores carry it. I actually get it at Target or Publix. Um, but it's Kite Hill cream cheese and it's made with almonds. And then I have a stick of butter, which is my grass-fed butter. You'll need half a cup of peanut butter, half a cup of stevia sweetened chocolate chip, a third cup of Swerve sweetener, or you can just use sugar, or you can use stevia, whatever you wanna use. A teaspoon of vanilla, and a fourth teaspoon of salt. You mix it all together and then I just use my cookie dough scoop and lay them out and put them in the freezer, flash freeze them, and then um, put them all into a container and put them back in the freezer and that's where I store them. I am definitely exhausted and but all of it was so worth it because now I know I can go to the freezer and there's lots of frozen um, yogurt sticks and we've got some muffins that'll be quick for breakfast tomorrow morning and it just saves me so much extra effort 
for a majority of the time whenever I take these, you know, a couple days out of the month and do some bulk cooking. So, if you guys like this style video, please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And like I said, any of the tools that I can, I try to link below so that you guys can try out some of these things for yourself. If you're new here, I would love it if you joined my channel. Like I said, I'm a mom of three and do a lot of homemaking and motherhood style content. So if you are new here, hit the subscribe button. As always, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.